Norrie may well be. Norrie. Hi, Norrie. How are you? Oh, reasonable. The, the sitting up straight person. How are you? I'm oh, pretty good. I haven't uh, seen you since the Harold Park Hotel. I gave you a free bourbon and coke when I was a barmaid there about 14 years ago. Shh, people shouldn't know that I was on the take then. But thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now, what's the worst trouble you ever got yourself into? Oh, ending up on the front page of um, Perth Daily Newspapers for a week, or twice a year it was. Um, I, some boy took my checkbook and went buying and selling cars, so of course I was charged as the co-conspirator. His history was a heroin addict, male prostitute, and I was a transsexual, so you can imagine the media had a field day. And... But he just stole your checkbook? Yes, yes. So you really had nothing to do with it? That's what I told the court. Yeah. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Did they believe you? <laughs> Um, not initially, but I won the Supreme Court appeal representing myself. So tell me about transsexuality, what it is to be trapped in the wrong gender. Oh, um, well, I, I used to identify very much as a transsexual yes. um, think I w and thought I was trapped in the wrong body. I've now come to the conclusion that, well, maybe like a lot of people, I'm a little bit yin and yang, male and female, masculine and feminine. I think any healthy human being has to embrace both sides of themselves. Yeah. And so that's where I've got to at the end of the road. OK, but at the time when you thought you were in the wrong gender, mm -hmm. what was going on in your head? Um, th that I had to have the surgery and fix it and become a normal woman. Right. And did you go that far? Yes, I did. Really? Yes, I, I found, though, that uh, normal wasn't quite for me. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, gender reassignment surgery is a major, major thing. It, it takes a long time. You've got lots of injections. Oh, an hour and a half. <laughs> you sleep through it. <laughs> Why don't we all do it, I ask myself. <laughs> but it's it's not just the operation. You have to have a series of hormone injections before that. There's, there's It's quite pills. a... I told, pills. I told the pills. Yeah. I, I didn't like the needles. OK, and, the, and there's counselling and so on. Yes. At the time where you are... Over this period of time where you are changing gender, what is that like? Oh, it's a bit like puberty, I suppose. Um, having a new body, new shape, people reacting to you differently, learning new roles. Well, it's not really like puberty, is it? Because puberty, everybody knows what's going on. You, you're growing from a, a, an adolescent into an adult, but whereas you are changing gender, that's not what everybody does. But with the hormones, your body goes through puberty again. OK, is that what it feels like? <laughs> yes. And it's, it's like with, with the same thing, like nipple development. Luckily, um, I had, you know, female friends who could say, oh, yes, that happened to me when I was 12 or 14. You just, you know, if they get a bit sensitive, put Band-Aids over them, etc. That's an interesting point. What's the guide track for becoming a, a woman when you're a man? How do you know it's all working right? Well, in my spare time, I work as a hooker on William Street. I haven't had any complaints from my straight clients. Is that right? <laughs> Have they ever spotted it? Oh, some do, some don't, but I work where the trainees work, so... Okay. I often wonder, you know, they, they often don't ask me what's down there, and I think... Why didn't they ask that? And I thought, well, maybe they're bisexual, maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah. What about for you? I mean, it, is there just as much sensation? Is it just as pleasurable for you? It's different, but yes, there's a, I mean, all the nerve endings are still there and sex happens in the head. Yes, that's absolutely true. <laughs> so what was it about you that made you think that you were a woman? Um, well, my early 20s, um, I think I was doing drag shows at the time, and doing the drag shows, I looked at myself in the mirror one day and thought, that looks like a happy, well-contented woman. Oh, that's me, that's who I really am. And, and this was a persona that I got approval from, okay. whereas in the androgynous in-between, I just got a lot of flack. <laughs> Where are you gender-wise now? Oh, um, gender-wise, well, I'm a happy eunuch. Uh, I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm a human being. A happy eunuch? Yes. Meaning? Uh, it means I've had my balls cut off. Yeah. <laughs> OK. I guess it does, really, when you think about it. <laughs> Do you still work as a hooker? Occasionally. Occasionally. And is that, is that a, a fulfilling thing for you? Lots of fun, yes. Yeah? But mm. is it fulfilling? Well, if you could get laid and paid, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, not necessarily, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, just getting laid will do me. <laughs> Well, I suppose that's why you're working for Auntie. Yeah. Uh, no, I get screwed at Auntie. There's a... <laughs> no, that's not true, Auntie. You're very good to me. What sort of clients do you see as a hooker? Um, oh, I don't know. People with time to kill and $100, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Varies. Yeah. An enormous range. Yeah. Who's your most memorable client? The one who you look back on and think, that was, even by the standards of what I've seen, that was extraordinary. Oh, um, it would have to be a young ma male-female couple mm -hmm. because that's not something I think I'd have ever tried on my own, but they were offering me money for it and, yeah. <laughs> what did they want? Um, 
Oh, she, her fantasy was to be with a woman, uh, with her partner there, and uh, he went along with it, and yeah. Is that worth more than a hundred dollars? That must be. <laughs> <laughs> well, to tell the truth, I let them extend another half hour for free because I was having fun. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> You'll never get ahead in this business, is that so? <laughs> Oh, I've amused myself now. Well, Nori May, I must say you seem incredibly well adjusted for someone who has been incredibly well adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a real pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for the brief for those today. That's it for tonight, folks. We'll see you again next week. Until then, good night. Good night.